The first witch to make headlines in Australia was Rosaline Norton. She lived in Sydney's red light district of King's Cross, and during the 1950s, she spoke out strongly about witchcraft and magic. She publicly experimented with trance techniques and led an exotic and bohemian life as an artist. Her paintings were inspired by occult visions of ancient gods. But Rosaline's art was too bizarre for the times. It tapped a deep pagan pulse, and the public at large was outraged. Rosaline Norton died in 1979, her passing largely unmourned and unnoticed. For in the years between, the practice of witchcraft had widened. For those who seek it, it is now a suburban pursuit. Tarnith is a professional fire eater. With her husband, Gwydion, she heads a witchcraft group in Western Australia where witchcraft's image of evil still lingers. They keep their belief in the occult strictly private to themselves. Members are often recruited through a post office box number. Over a period of three weeks, I saw an ad for coven members in the uh, Sunday Times, so I answered one of them. And uh, the result of that was within a couple of weeks, I joined what at that stage was the only coven that was fairly public. Within a two week period of that, I was um, recommended that I took over as high priest. Um, so I did. Within this hand fasting. When people join the coven, they are joining a family. There are responsibilities within a family, but there are an awful lot of happiness, there's a lot of joy. I would ask all here, is there any reason why this hand fasting ritual should not proceed? Well, hand fasting is a very beautiful occasion. It is, in fact, a witch's wedding. It doesn't hold, in most cases, any legal status, although if the high priest or high priestess was a civil celebrant in this country, it could, in fact, become legal. Earth and water, we purify by union. It's unusual for non-witches, I suppose, understanding hand fasting, because it can last for a minimum period of a year and a day. It could last for any number of years. I've known one where one is, was made for five years. It's a special feeling, very sacred. <laughs> Helios and I decided, in view of our youth, that for us a year and a day would be appropriate. Well, at the current time, I'm a see-through barmaid. That involves wearing see-through costumes and working around at different hotels as a barmaid. And I sometimes work private shows and buck shows as well. that we refer to as wickening is nothing more than a craft version of the Christian christening. Very simply, all it does is place them under protection of the gods and goddesses that we worship, but there is no commitment. We are met in this circle, sacred circle, to ask the blessings of the mighty god and goddess. There are many paths and each must find his own. Therefore, we do not seek to bind JJ to any one path while he is still young. It's very, very important for the child that he has his teeny weeny for his brush with the gods and the goddess. I anoint the Ariel with wine in the name of the mighty goddess. 
Mighty Lord, bestow upon this child the gift of wisdom. Gentle Goddess, bestow upon this child the gift of love. was the female's womb. Having her lie in a pentagram position with five red candles around her, which do represent the very strong male element, creates, if you like, a procreative field to where a doll can be born. And the doll is, is nothing more than uh, a symbolism of a human being. With the doll being made on her stomach, again, it is symbolic of the creating of a, of a child. When the life force, if you like, is impregnated into the doll, it is then brought down, it is symbolic, it is brought right down through the womb or over the womb. It is not uncommon for a high priestess to in fact feel birth pains. In this particular case, the doll was made of me, it was made by me, because I have a, a problem with where I had a fractured neck and I simply wish to do some work. The reason for using x-rays is medical science has done nothing more than indicate that they are able to heal. So why shouldn't we work natural healing in alongside it? And fairly obviously the doll could be used in the more traditional voodoo or the black magic side where it could be used to harm. Uh, you could create headaches, you could kill the same energy force power, if you like, that you use to heal, you can use to kill. seem to find the traditional religions and the concept of a single god not enough. What does the occult, driven underground for centuries, appear to offer these people? The fact is that within Christianity and within Judaism, when you think, when you imagine in your mind, when you personify deity, for most people, it's male. And there's an old uh, famous, it's not that old, but there's a famous saying by Mary Daly, if God is male, the male is God. And one reason that I think people are so attracted powerfully to magic and to the pagan religions is not only to worship, uh, let's say, mama in the sky instead of papa in the sky, they want to be God. I mean, I think the fundamental thing about the magical religions and about pagan religions is that ultimately they say within yourself, you are the God, you are the goddess. And therefore, what is so subversive in a very powerfully beautiful way about the pagan religions is that for women, they say, look, you too are God. Goddess worship is a larger concept than coven-based witchcraft, and its rituals are broader and more diverse. In Berkeley, California, the universal goddess finds a special place in a coven of feminists from which all men are excluded. Their leader is Hungarian-born Z Budapest. Z calls this Dianic witchcraft. Dianic witchcraft, in one word, is women's mysteries. That means women get together as women, and devote themselves to a magical pursuit and they take care of business, whatever the women in particular need. You who circle the world with your oceans, sweet mermaids, sweet nereids, who swim within you, swim in our blood, embolden us, bring us your power. 
passion, your lust for living. Another thing women's mysteries used to do is we used to judge. Women used to curse the enemies of peace and women. Women just used to have a blacklist get out in front of the temple and tell the word that these people are bad, they should be curbed, they are warmongers, and they are bad for babies. And we did this until about the fourth century when it was stopped. And when women's mysteries were stopped, women's rights stopped, women's any kind of significance stopped. And that's when this whole silly idea came about that the Christians fed everybody that women have no souls. In women's circles, I like to have a balance of lesbians and straight ladies. Lesbians bring in the affection. There's a lot of very nice, affectionate, open nature with accustomed to be affectionate with each other type of feeling. Straight ladies are totally free. They, they do not perform for men. They can be totally themselves. So when I mix them together, it makes a very good combination. When I was a little girl, my mother used to send me to the Catholic Church, and she would tell me, baby, go ask Father Fitzpatrick for a little holy water, you know, and she'd send me with a jar. And I'd go get this holy water from the church, <clears throat> and she'd put it in the bucket with uh, sugar and urine and a little perfume and get a picture of one of the saints and mop the floors. And the whole time she was mopping the floors, she was telling the saint what she wanted to have happening, you know, um, in her house, you know. That's what I call being a Louisiana Catholic. Oh, yeah, yeah, well. Young side, head of hand. Mother of the winds of change. Queen of the transformers, oh, yeah. Come dance with us, whirling woman. I was very surprised when I got my first consultation and was told that I was going to be a priestess. It took me 12 years to get initiated because, you know, I always wanted to be a movie star. <laughs> What we remember here with the craft and in the women's movement and uh, especially in the spirituality movement, the goddess movement, that they burned us systematically for about six to seven hundred years, not measly 15 years that Hitler was doing it. In the name of Christ, all denominations burned women, burned children. They used to spare children who were only under a year old, but the older ones, they used to strip naked in the name of Jesus, drive them around the bodies of their burning parents and flagellate them on top of it so that they won't forget the lesson. Europe suffered incredibly. They wiped out whole towns. And the born-again Christians are shaking the same tree that is exactly the same sentiment they are trying to sell it, we are in the 20th century, but they are as dangerous as they ever was.